This is the fifth video tutorial in the Edexcel C3 revision tutorial series. Today we will be looking at redox reactions as well as electrolysis, which is why we have this picture of a red ox here. In today's video we will look at what electrolytes are, we will look at the movement of ions in electrolysis and explain what we mean by redox reactions. We will look at the processes occurring at the anode and at the cathode. And finally, we will practice writing half equations for these reactions. So what is electrolysis? Well, you should remember back to C1 where you would have looked at electrolysis previously. Simply put, electrolysis is the breaking down of a substance using electricity. You apply the electricity to the electrolyte, which is an ionic substance that's either molten or dissolved in water. This means that there are free ions that can conduct the electricity, and therefore the electrical circuit can be completed, with the positive ions being called cations, the negative ions being called anions. The cations go into the cathode, which is the negative electrode, and then the anions going to the anode, which is the positive electrode. Before we look at electrolysis in more detail, we need to remind ourselves about redox reactions. You'll have come across redox reactions in C1, where you looked at both reduction and oxidisation where oxidization was the addition of oxygen to a molecule, for example, copper plus oxygen going to copper oxide, and reduction, which was the removal of the oxygen, for example, copper oxide plus carbon going to copper plus carbon dioxide. We are now going to use the redox reaction in terms of electrons. When we are looking in terms of electrons, we can use the term oil rig. Oil rig means that oxidation is the loss of electrons, whereas reduction is the gain of electrons, hence oil rig. Here we have an oxidization. So we have our magnesium atom and our oxygen atom. From C2, you should remember that magnesium has two electrons in its outer shell whereas oxygen has six. In order to form an ionic compound, two of these electrons are transferred. So magnesium transfers its two electrons over to the oxygen. This means that the magnesium has been oxidized as it has lost two electrons to form the Mg2 plus ion. So oxidization is the loss of electrons. Opposite to this, we have what has happened to the oxygen. So as the magnesium has been oxidised, this must mean that the oxygen has been reduced. The oxygen atom has gained these two electrons in order to form the O2- ion. So reduction is the loss of electrons. Now we can work out the half equations. The half equations show us the reduction or the oxidization. The overall reaction for this equation is 2Mg plus O2 goes to 2MgO. We can also write this as two half equations. These half equations will show us both the oxidization and the reduction. So for our first equation, we have our oxidization where we have Mg goes to Mg2 plus plus 2E minus. This means that two electrons have been given off, with the oxidization being the loss of these electrons. For our oxygen, we can also write a half equation, this time showing the reduction. So we will have O2 plus four electrons goes to 2O2 minus. This shows that we have a reduction as we have a gain in electrons, with the electrons being placed before the arrow in the equation. We will now look at this in terms of electrolysis. So to recap, 
for electrolysis to happen, we need our electrolyte made up of our negative non-metal ions and our positive metal ions. An example of this is the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. When we carry out an electrolysis of a molten metal salt, it means that we will only have the products from the metal salt. In a solution, we will also have to talk about hydrogen and hydroxide ions, which we will look at in a bit. For molten sodium chloride, we will have one type of cation and one type of anion. In this case, our cation is going to be our positive metal ion, in this case, sodium. The cations are always positive metal ions or hydrogen. This means that our chloride must be our anion, so we will have Na plus and Cl minus. This means that our molten electrolyte is made up only of these two ions. The positive metal ions, the Na plus, will move towards the cathode where they will gain an electron and be reduced to solid sodium metal. This sodium metal will then build up on the cathode. The negatively charged chloride anions will move towards the anode, where they will form Cl2 gas and give off two electrons. This is a loss of electrons and as such the chloride ions have been oxidised to chlorine gas. This will then be given off as a gas and leave the solution. This shows that there is both a reduction and an oxidation reaction going on simultaneously. I want you to pause the video at this point and work out the half equations for the electrolysis of molten copper chloride. The formula for copper chloride is CuCl2. We have just looked at the electrolysis of molten metal salts. However, we also need to know about the electrolysis of them in solution. This means that both hydroxide and hydrogen ions are also present, the H plus and the OH minus from the water. At the anode, the simplest ion is discharged. For example, Cl minus will be discharged rather than OH minus, but OH minus will be discharged rather than SO42 minus. So the simplest ion will be discharged. At the cathode, the metal will be discharged if it's less reactive than hydrogen. If the metal is more reactive than hydrogen, then the hydrogen is discharged. For example, copper is less reactive than hydrogen, so it will be discharged, whereas sodium is far more reactive than hydrogen, so therefore hydrogen will be discharged. We will look at this in relation to copper sulphate. In the electrolysis of copper sulphate solution, we have two different compounds. We have copper sulphate, which is CuSO4, as well as water, which is H2O. These two compounds, under electrolysis, will split into their respective ions. We will have Cu2+, as the cation from the copper sulphate, and our SO42- as the anion, the sulphate ion. And from water, we have the H plus ion and the hydroxide ion, the OH minus ion. As hydrogen is more reactive than copper, it will be the copper that is evolved at the cathode. So the copper ions will move towards the cathode in order to become copper solid. The half equation is Cu2 plus plus 2E minus goes to Cu. It is a gain in electrons, so it is a reduction. Meanwhile, at the anode, the OH- minus is a simpler anion than the SO42-. minus. This means that it will be preferentially evolved. The half equation for this is 4OH- minus goes to 2H2O plus O2 plus 4E-. minus.
and it is the O2, the oxygen gas, that will be released. This leaves us with our hydrogen and our sulphate still in the solution, meaning that we will have formed H2SO4, better known as sulfuric acid. This means that we have formed four products. We have our copper, which is solid, our oxygen gas, our water, which is still in the liquid form, and our sulfuric acid in the aqueous form. As well as copper sulphate, you should also know the products of electrolysis for copper chloride solution, CuCl2, sodium sulphate solution, Na2SO4, and sodium chloride solution, NaCl. I want you to pause the video at this point, working out the two half equations and the products at both the cathode and the anode. For copper chloride solution, you should have got at the cathode, Cu2 plus plus 2E minus goes to Cu, with the product at the cathode being copper. And then at the anode, 2Cl minus goes to Cl2 plus 2E minus, having chlorine gas produced at the anode. For sodium sulphate, you should have got the production of hydrogen at the cathode. 2H plus plus 2E minus goes to H2 gas. And at the anode, you should have got the production of oxygen with the half equation the same as for copper sulphate. And then finally, for sodium chloride, you should have got hydrogen production at the cathode and chlorine gas production at the anode. It is important to note that the electrolysis that we've looked at so far has been using neutral carbon graphite electrodes. In the next video, C3.6, we will look at how we can use different metal electrodes in order to carry out purification or to carry out electroplating.